What is going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. Hope it's not the first time you're watching my videos, but just in case it is, I'm a fourth year medical student and biomedical science graduate studying at King's College London. In this video, I'll be talking to you guys about how you can upload an unlimited amount of information onto your mind using Anki. I want to start off by saying this is not sponsored by Anki. This is honestly a tool and a program that I discovered recently that has absolutely changed the game in regards to how I work, how I study, and how I learn new things in medical school. And this technique doesn't just apply to medical school. Whether you're in your GCSEs, your A-levels, uh, studying history in a different degree. Any sort of information you want from whatever discipline can be uploaded onto your mind using Anki and using this specific method. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, starting off by first telling you guys what a flashcard is and what exactly Anki is. Okay, so starting off, what exactly is a flashcard? So a flashcard is a very uh, kind of simple um, idea. Um, basically, it's a card or a paper where on one side you have a question like, what is the capital of, let's say, uh, France? And on the back of the card, you have the answer, which in this case would be uh, Paris. So on one side, I have a question attached and the other side, I have the answer. And it's basically a simple way of testing your knowledge to make sure that you know what you're talking about and can memorize stuff in preparation for your exams or whatever you're preparing for. Now, Anki does this exact same thing. Essentially, what Anki is, is a flashcard software that you can use on your phone, on your desktop or whatever device you have in order to do the exact same thing. You know, having questions on one side and an answer on the other side. But it's not just that. It's not just a simple flashcard. It uses uh, intelligent algorithms to test your constantly over a period of time which I'll go on to talk about later on in the video. Anki is also completely free I think the only thing you have to pay for is the uh, iOS app on your iPad if you want to use it on there but everything on your desktop on Anki web uh, on your uh, phone that's all completely free and that's one reason as to why I would encourage uh, students particularly to use Anki in order to uh, study for their flashcards. Okay, so now moving on to why I think you guys should use Anki and why I think it will help you. The first thing, as I already said, once you've understood a concept in school, um, you know, once you've kind of gone through it yourself, made notes on it, and honestly understand the concept, Anki is the part that I think is so, so useful in uploading exactly what you've learned onto your mind. So during my first, second, third year of medical school, I didn't actually use Anki's for a few reasons. And the first reason is that the first three years of medical schools was more to do with understanding content. It was more just about understanding how the body works and how the body relates to disease. So there's a lot to do with, you know, understanding concepts rather than memorizing specific details. And to be honest with you, I probably could have used Anki in first, second, third year as well. But I think Anki is definitely more applicable to me now as a fourth year medical student where Right now, I think I have a good foundation of kind of medicine in my mind. I understand the broad concepts, but in my fourth and fifth year, what's really, really important for me is to make sure that I memorize all of the specifics. For example, in my first, second, third year of medical school, we'd be expected to know kind of, um, you know, what a disease is, make a diagnosis, and kind of know what sort of treatment methods you'd use uh, to treat this disease. Whereas right now in medical school, my fourth and fifth year, what's really important is not just to know the treatments, but to memorize what order you'd actually give the treatments in, what order you'd give investigations in, and all of these like very, very specific information that doesn't really rely on understanding, but more relies on memorization uh, in the process. And that's exactly what I think Anki is really, really good with. Once you understand concepts is really, really good to help you memorize them and also memorize specific amounts of information. So don't get me wrong, I still do make notes on all of my lecture content and everything I need to learn in order to kind of understand it and frame it in a way that my mind understands it. Once that's done, I then now use Anki in order to try and memorize everything that I've understood in my lectures and upload all that information in my mind and make sure that I'm testing myself constantly in the future to make sure that I retain all of the information that I understood in the lecture. Anki is also very, very cool because it uses uh, both active recall and also space repetition in order to constantly test yourself um, in the future. So it kind of uses a rating system. So whenever you get a question, it allows you to rate it easy, medium, or hard. And based on your answer of easy, medium, or hard, you'll then use this like really smart algorithm to resurface cards in the future. So if let's say, for example, you find um, an answer very, very hard, it will make sure to actually resurface these cards to you more often in the future. And let's say, for example, if I say that a card is very easy, I don't need to kind of memorize this again. All of this stuff that you mark easy, will come up uh, less frequently in your flashcard deck. And that's a really, really key thing and cool thing about Anki is that it resurfaces the correct cards at the correct time right before you're kind of, you know, just about to forget it. And that's what's so, so useful about the Anki software. The last reason I think 
think you guys should use uh, Anki over any other kind of software like Quizlet is that Anki is very, very easy and quick to use and it reduces the friction to creating flashcards. That's another thing that I found very, very difficult in my past. You know, when using different companies to create uh, flashcards and even to be honest with you with like writing down my own flashcards is I found it very, very difficult to actually create these flashcards. It took so much of my time to sit down and input all of this information that I ended up spending so much of my time literally just making flashcards instead of actually testing myself on this information. And that's a great thing about Anki. The last great thing about Anki is that it's very frictionless in creating these cards. But now let's actually move on to my computer and I'll show you guys exactly how I use Anki to upload all of this information onto my mind for my medical school exams. So as I said, the first way that I actually use Anki is to upload new information onto my mind. So essentially when I come home from a lecture, I'll finish a lecture, uh, I'll come home and I'll sit down on my desk and I'll start to make notes, like handwritten notes, as you guys know I do, uh, on my tablet. I'll make these notes and essentially what these notes are, are my own kind of translation of the lecture. So making notes to make sure that I'm writing what the lecturer said in a way that I understand currently, right now, and also making sure that these notes are something I can constantly refer to in the future should I ever forget the concept and be able to understand them in my own words in a way that makes sense to me. Once I actually make those notes, what I then do is move on to Anki to create flashcards and create questions to test myself on the knowledge that I've created my notes. So in the future, I can continue to review these kind of topics and making sure that I remember them and don't forget them in time for my exam. Okay, so moving on to show you guys exactly how I make my Anki flashcards based on my lectures. Um, so on the right side of the screen here, I have a lecture that I made uh, a couple of weeks ago. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I created the flashcards. Based so on one of the kind of disease that we had to understand was something called placenta. Uh, preview over here, which is the insertion of a placenta in the lower segment of the uterus. So straight away, there's kind of a concept that I need to understand. So I want to create a question um, first up, which is going to be um, define placental preview. And then on the back side of the flashcard, I'll write down exactly what the definition is to test myself in the future. So I'll say insertion of placenta in the lower segment of the uterus. And as you guys can see over here, I actually added a picture just to remind myself of what it actually is. So just to kind of, um, you know, get a picture as well. And that's a really cool thing about Anki is you're able to actually, you know, um, include pictures into your flashcards, which is way better than making a simple like paper flashcard. You know, having a picture here will really jog my memory and will make sure that I kind of increase the amount of cues uh, and memory cues to remember what this disease actually means. So I'll copy it and paste it straight into here. And that is essentially my first flashcard. And this is actually um, a basic flashcard, a basic meaning, um, you know, the front is a question and the back is an answer. And I'll show you guys later on how I use um, the different kinds of types of flashcards that we can have on Anki in order to memorize things. So once that's actually done and I have a definition there, I'll click add. And that's essentially my first flashcard created. So this is exactly what I'll do for the entire lecture. I'll go along at the entire lecture of my notes, making flashcards based on my notes and creating questions to test myself in the future. And that all gets added to my deck, which I'll then use later on to review my flashcards later on to make sure that I actually know what all of this information is. And that's the first way that I use Anki. So the next way that I actually use Anki is to test myself while I'm doing past papers. The thing about medical school and especially in your fourth and fifth year is that there's so much content to learn and a lot of that content you're expected to learn on your own or actually in the hospital when you're on the wards. In my fourth year we don't actually have that many lectures and all of the lectures that we're given are given at the actual hospital location so if you're in a hospital in London or a hospital outside of London all of your teaching ends up being very very different because all of your lectures are being given at the hospital by the doctors there. So what you need to learn is actually quite subjective and it's really, really important to make sure that you're testing yourself using past papers and then as you're testing yourself using the past papers, making sure to use Anki to create flashcards. So any sort of question that you answer wrong or anything that you're not entirely sure of, you can put it in Anki straight away to ensure that in the future you can retest yourself on that information, making sure that for the actual exam, you get that question right. And even if you're in high school or in A-levels, whatever you're in, Anki can be really, really helpful here to fill in the gaps. So let's say, for example, um, you already understand the mechanism of a disease or you understand the topic you're revising. If you get that question wrong, uh, you know, you have to Two choices really. You can take what you've learned from the past paper question and add it to your notes, or you can add it to Anki to make sure that everything you don't understand based on the past papers is added to your stack of questions. You can retest yourself in the future, again, to ensure that you don't get that question wrong in the real exam. If, for example, I get this question wrong uh, and I clicked you know, the wrong answer here and I find the correct answer here. 
What I'm gonna do straight away is to read the kind of explanation of why I got it wrong, and then make sure that I add this topic or whatever the answer is to my flashcards uh, straight away. So as you guys can see here, this was about a 29 year old female who had a cervical smear test as part of her screening program. Her results came back HPV positive and was um, examined cytologically. Uh, what is the next uh, action you take? So don't worry too much about the medicine or the science. The correct answer is you'd repeat the test in 12 months. So the one way that I can kind of make a flashcards is say uh, after a smear test that comes back um, HPV positive uh, with normal cytology, uh, what is the next action? And obviously the answer would be uh, repeat the test in 12 months. So I'll just copy and paste it and put it in there. And that is kind of the one way that I can uh, make an Anki flash card. Again, making it a basic card, um, but there's also another way that you can do it. If I felt like this entire topic is something that I don't really know too well, what I'd actually do is to make a card for the entire topic. So I'd say um, interpreting uh, cervical smear results, for example. And then the good thing about this website that I use, uh, which is Past Medicine, to study for my medical school exams is that they actually have an explanation of the, uh, the answer right down below. So here is the management of results, which is what I want to learn. What I can do is actually copy and paste the whole entire thing directly into my Anki. And what I can now do is actually create something called a closed deletion. So I can go onto here and uh, add a closed deletion. And what's really important is to change it to a closed deletion type of card. So this is not a basic card with a front and back like you know about. I'll show you guys what I mean by a closed deletion card. But what I wanna do is close delete everything that I think is really necessary to, you know, to test myself on. And this card won't test me on, you know, all of this information. It'll actually only test me on the sections I'm actually close deleting. So I've closed deleted three parts to the card essentially. The first is this part here. The second is this part here. And the third is this last part here as well, actually. And let's go back to Anki now and actually review the cards I made so I can explain to you guys exactly what these cards were. Okay, so this is a normal basic card as I described to you. The front here being the question, which is define a placental previa. And I'll press spacebar and it'll give me the back of the card straight away. So again, that's insertion of the placenta in the lower segment of the uterus, as you guys can see here. And then now down below, I can mark it as again, good or easy. Again, meaning that it will come uh, again today and tomorrow. Good meaning it will resurface this card in a couple of days. And again, easy being that it will resurface it uh, a bit later on as well. So for this one, I got it correct. I found it quite easy. So I'm gonna click um, easy. And that brings on the part of the closed deletion card, which is what I talked to you guys about earlier on. So as you can see, I essentially deleted a section over here. And what that is, is essentially um, a card that fills in the gap. So the question here or the front of the card is interpreting cervical smear results. So how do you interpret a cervical smear results? And the back of the card here being a negative uh, HPV results test. So how will I interpret a negative HPV test? If I'm not entirely sure what it is, I'll press spacebar and it'll give me the actual answer. So again, it's kind of like a fill in the gap sort of thing. So the answer would be return it to normal recall and a few other things as well. But essentially what that allows me to do is allows me to create multiple cards and just delete the areas that I need to test myself on. So let's kind of take another example here. So again, this is the exact same card, you know, the interpretation of cervical smear results, but this time it's deleted. What would you do if you have a positive result? So the answer that I should be trying to, you know, regurgitate and come up with in my mind is a positive HPV results. So again, I'd press space bar and the answer would come up. And just to reiterate, this is a filling in the gap sort of card. So those are essentially the two main ways that I use Anki in order to upload information onto my mind from my lectures and also from past papers that I do as well. This is obviously a very basic, you know, Anki tutorial and how I use Anki to memorize stuff in my medical school. If you want to go into more detail on how to actually use Anki, you can go to the exact same place that I learned how to use Anki, which is Skillshare, who are also kindly sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online platform and community of learning new skills. There are thousands of online courses for creative people, including cinematography, videography, studying for exams, and also making flashcards. So if you're interested in a particular topic, whether that might be, you know, making videos, you know, skateboarding, whatever you want, then I'm sure Skillshare will have something for you in order to learn all of these new skills that you want to learn. I've actually personally used Skillshare to improve my skills in various areas, including how to actually record these YouTube videos, how to make them better, how to study for medical school exams, and all 
also how to use Anki flashcards. So the way that I personally actually learned how to use Anki flashcards was a class on Skillshare by Ali Abdal called uh, The Ultimate Guide to Anki, which I highly recommend you guys watch. If you're interested to learn how to use Anki in a great amount of detail to help you guys pass your exams in medical school or whatever field you're in. The class actually goes into great detail on how to use Anki and how to actually use all of the skills and software that Anki produces in order to efficiently learn and upload a large amount of content onto your mind. And even though I was against using flashcards in medical school, once I watched this class, it definitely convinced me to jump on board with Anki. And I really appreciated Skillshare for allowing me to learn such a new skill. If you're interested in checking out Skillshare for yourself and you want to learn some new skills, the first 1,000 people who click on the link down below will get a free trial of Skillshare. And honestly, I highly recommend you guys at least sign up for the trial. You know, try out these new classes on Anki, on whatever you want to learn on Skillshare. And if you find that you actually benefit from them and you learn loads of new skills, then the annual membership is actually less than $10 a month. So link for that is down in the description below. But that is pretty much it, guys. I can't stress how useful Anki flashcards have been for me in preparation for my medical school exams. And I really hope you guys take something away from this video. And do check out the Skillshare course as well on how to use Anki efficiently for your uh, exams as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions at all in regards to, you know, how to use Anki uh, or how to, you know, efficiently incorporate that into your study routine, then please leave a comment down below. Please make sure you're subscribed as well. Please make sure you like the video, turn notifications on, and I'll see you guys on the next one.